Hello and welcome. This is World of Wastewater. This is part 13 in a series going over a wastewater exam, which you can find a link to in the description below. If you're following along, these questions are numbers 61 through 65. If you enjoy collecting scum as much as earning a paycheck, then feel free to hit that like button and subscribe. With that said, let's get started. Determine the setting on the liquid polymer chemical feeder in gallons per day when flow is at 4.7 mgd. The liquid polymer delivered to the plant contains 5.36 pounds of polymer per gallon of liquid solution. A. 22 B. 58 C. 88 D. 122 The answer is C, 88 gallons per day. This question can be broken down into two parts. For the first part, we use the loading rate formula. This will tell us how many pounds of polymer are required daily at the given flow and optimal dosage. Let's plug our numbers into this equation. 4.7 mgd times 12 milligrams per liter times 8.34 pounds per gallon equals 470.4 pounds per day of polymer. Now that we know how much polymer is needed, we can figure out at what rate we need to deliver the polymer into the system to achieve our optimal dosage concentration. We solve this by taking our previous answer and dividing it by pounds per gallon of polymer liquid solution. So to solve this, we take 470.4 pounds per day divided by 5.36 pounds per gallon, which equals 88 gallons per day of polymer, or C, our final answer. Given the following data, calculate the pounds of TSS removed by the primary clarifier. A. 636.3 B. 775.6 C. 1576 D. 2352 The answer is B, 775.6. This is another question that will be using the loading rate formula. Loading rate is one of the most utilized formulas by operators, so you should have it memorized. This question is fairly straightforward. We are going to figure out the total suspended solids loading in our influent and subtract that by the total suspended solids loading of our primary effluent. The difference between those numbers will indicate how much is being removed by the primary clarifier. Something to note about this question is that, like a couple of the others we've come across on this test so far, it tries to trick us by throwing in extra information that we don't need. Specifically, this question gives us the final effluent TSS data. This question only asks about the TSS removed by the primary clarifier, so the TSS in our final effluent is irrelevant. I'll cross it out so it doesn't confuse us. For the first part of our answer, we're going to solve for pounds per day of influent TSS. This is 1.5 mgd times 221 milligrams per liter times 8.34 pounds per gallon equaling 2,764.7 pounds per day. For the second part, we are going to figure out the pounds per day of primary effluent TSS. This is 1.5 mgd times 159 milligrams per liter times 8.34 pounds per gallon equaling 1,989.1 pounds per day. Lastly, we will subtract our second answer from the first. We'll take our influent loading of 2,764.7 pounds per day, minus our primary effluent loading of 1,989.1 pounds per day, giving us our final answer of 775.6 pounds per day being removed by the primary clarifier. On a side note, we can see by our answer this primary clarifier is not performing well, with a removal rate of about 28%. A primary clarifier without additional chemical treatment should be removing at least 40 to 60% of TSS. This is why performing these tests and equations is vital to troubleshooting a treatment plant. Total Keldahl nitrogen, TKN, refers to A. Organic nitrogen, B. Ammonia and nitrite, C. Nitrate and pH, D. Organic nitrogen and ammonia nitrogen.
The answer is D, organic nitrogen and ammonia nitrogen. Total Keldahl nitrogen, TKN, is a chemistry method that allows us to analyze a sample for the amount of organic nitrogen and ammonia nitrogen, which I will refer to as just ammonia. Organic nitrogen is found in proteins, aminos, and urea. Most organic nitrogen turns into ammonia by the time it arrives at a treatment facility, but some treatment plants have to deal with a more unpredictable or larger ratio of organic nitrogen to ammonia, depending on the industrial users for a given system. To help understand why TKN is useful, we need to understand what can happen when we don't measure it. If you are at a treatment plant that nitrifies and only measure the ammonia content of your influent, you may notice when you test your secondary clarifier effluent for nitrate that you have a much higher value than what the ammonia coming into the system was. This wouldn't make much sense because you shouldn't have more nitrate than you had ammonia to start with. That is because the amount of organic nitrogen coming into the plant was not accounted for. TKN allows us to understand the total amount of nitrogen coming into the facility so we can accurately manage the nitrification process. Understanding TKN can be confusing if you don't have a good idea of the nitrification process. Explaining this further is outside the scope of this question's explanation. However, I encourage you to learn more about nitrification and TKN prior to your exam. I have also placed a link to one of my other videos that goes over nitrification. If there is a large increase of influent plant solids, you may need to increase the blank in the aeration tank. A. MLVSS B. BOD C. Total suspended solids D. Phosphorus The answer is A. MLVSS. Generally speaking, if a larger than normal amount of solids are arriving at your plant, there will be more food for the bugs. If there is going to be more food for the bugs, then it is going to be important to keep the food to mass ratio balanced appropriately. More food means you're going to want more bugs in your system to eat it all up. This is most easily achieved by decreasing your wasting rates, which increases your mixed liquor suspended solids, which I will refer to as MLSS. And when you increase your MLSS, you are also increasing your mixed liquor volatile suspended solids, which I will refer to as MLVSS. Even though both of these could be the correct answer, let's go into the difference between the two. MLSS measures the total solids weight of a sample, whereas MLVSS measures the total volatile fraction of the total solids of a sample. More specifically, the solids in MLSS have microorganisms and non-biodegradable suspended matter, while MLVSS has microorganisms, non-degradable volatile suspended solids, and inert inorganic solid substances. The MLVSS value is always going to be lower than the MLSS value. However, when you measure both of these, you will notice the MLVSS tracks pretty well with what the MLSS value is. That is because the MLVSS is derived from an MLSS sample that gets placed in a muffle furnace at 550 degrees Celsius to vaporize volatile contents. What is left is called fixed solids, which are subtracted from the MLSS value to get the MLVSS. This gives us a more specific value for how many bugs actually exist in our system. However, because it typically follows the concentration of the MLSS value, we as operators generally use the MLSS to refer to our bug population. Calculate the BOD from the following data, A, 3.6, B, 150, C, 540, D, 700. The answer is C, 540 milligrams per liter. There are two different types of equations that are used when calculating biochemical oxygen demand. So, when answering these questions, it is important to see if they give us a seed value. This question does not give a seed value, meaning we will use the unseeded equation. If you're interested in a more complex BOD problem that utilizes seed values, check out question number 12 in part 3 of this series, which I have added a link to at the top of the screen. For our first step, we will subtract our initial dissolved oxygen value of 7.5 mg per liter 
by our final DO value of 3.9 milligrams per liter, then multiply that by 300 milliliters, which represents the size of a standard BOD bottle. This gives us an answer of 1,080 milligrams per liter. For our second part, we'll take that value of 1,080 milligrams per liter and divide it by the amount of sample used. In this case, it's two milliliters, which gives us our final answer of 540 milligrams per liter. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then check out the others on this channel. If you want to help us keep making great content for operators, there's a link to the World of Wastewater PayPal in the description below. See you next time on World of Wastewater.